Welcome to the Fearless Sellers, the Women of Amazon podcast. I'm Joey Roberts. What's going to make them come into your shop? Where's your shop window? Um, it's your hero image. So clicking on your hero image is what they're doing to come into your shop. Um, so your hero image look, needs to look fantastic. It needs to look really attractive. Um, and if you need to do something to be different, to attract people's attention as well, do that. Fatosh, welcome to the Fearless Sellers, the Women of Amazon podcast. I am thrilled to have you on the show today, all the way from London. I admire your clarity when you speak about selling on Amazon. You're an Amazon seller and you help Amazon sellers make their online storefronts a place their customers want to shop. Yes, thank you for having me, Joey. I'm I'm thrilled to be here, and um, well, you get you get a double dose of me this week as well. Um, so it's lovely to see you again. Um, as you said, I'm I'm an Amazon seller and also an Amazon listing optimizer, content creator. So I started off as a seller, and then um, morphed into listing optimizing, content creation um, under the banner of Maximaze. So I'm. I'm doing both those things, wearing both those hats at the moment. And and it's great. I love it. And you're also a mom. Yes. <laughs> yes, I have a 15-year-old daughter. I love it. Yeah. So you live in London, you're a mom, and you also speak four different languages. Where did you grow up and how do you know four different languages? Okay, it's a good question. So I'm a citizen of the world, I think. So um, my parents are both Turkish Cypriots. I was born in Zambia. Um, they, they happened to be living there at the time. And then when I was five, we moved back to Cyprus, which is where my family originally come from. So being born in Zambia, I was in a, in a British, very much a British community post-colonial. So I was always bilingual. So I've never, I've never spoken fewer than two languages. I've always spoken at least two languages. And then um, I went to school in Cyprus, mainly speaking Turkish. And then at the age of 16, I came to the UK to do my A-levels, which is sort of equivalent to your SATs, achievement tests, to go to university. And then I studied here and then I stayed. I mean, London is this amazing place. But um you know, I started learning French at school whilst I was in Cyprus. Okay, so you were living in the UK and you mm -hmm. have these language skills and you didn't start your first career selling physical products or selling and even being creative, right? What, what was your first job? That's a good question. So I studied economics because I thought I was going to go into finance and be a banker or, or a management consultant or something like that. Um, so I followed, I followed the herd into the city of London, but I didn't last very long. I was, I did that for less than a year. It was just, it was just not my thing. And so I was, I was 22 when I kind of stepped off stepped off that treadmill and started my own business, which um, completely different to what I do now um, was lingerie and swimwear. So we, um, you know, we had stores in very um, upscale locations in London, you know, the famous Kings Road, you've probably heard of, most people have heard of it. That was where our first store was. And so we built a brand. Um, we, you know, we sold it through our own stores, but we also sold it to, to high-end department stores as well. And then that, that business grew and it transitioned. So we ended up um, doing white labeling. We were producing for other people and, you know, putting their own label in it. So quite a lot of big department store chains in the UK, internationally as well. So, you know, it was partly intimate, partly swimwear, but a lot of swimwear. Um, and yeah, specialized in um, bigger cup sizes. So, you know, for the, there's a big trend with bra fitting, having the right, right size yes. fitting bra. 
and all this. Um, so we we were very, very technical. We had amazing factories we worked with. We had great design teams. So we, we very much were in that niche because it's very specialized. Not many people can do it. Um, and we sold in the US as well, in Europe. Um, we launched um, when Zalando, uh, who are huge in, in Europe, they're a big, big German company online. Um, we launched their sort of own label swimwear for them. We, we created it, did the whole thing. So I have a long history in basically running all different aspects of a business, ev everything about it from finance to logistics, to sourcing, to selling the whole, the whole thing. Yeah. So you were selling the lingerie and the swimsuits in physical stores in London to start, and you were sourcing these yourself from China or from where? No. Um, so initially, uh, my parents had a factory in Cyprus. They made they made underwear and swimwear. Oh, so, cool! Yeah, the product was coming from there, um, and then they, you know, they retired at, at some point. And then we worked with factories in Portugal. And then um, we started working with factories in Tunisia. We never worked with China. Um, you know, it was always a, a sort of European product. Um, and yeah, we, we always worked with European supply base for our fabrics, our raw materials, and for the manufacturing. How wonderful. What a great experience. And then you got to get the manufacturing side from your parents and then yeah. when you were selling overseas so from the UK to the US was that online mm -hmm. no um I used to fly to New York three times a year um there, there was a there was a show for intimates and you know we had customers that that we used to see um there was a swim show in Miami I used to go and do that and we just used to see our customers there um and get their orders, then ship their products. It's the old fashioned days. It was before everything was online. <laughs> yeah, and they have the lingerie models and the swimsuit models. Yeah, I, I know the complete structure. When I was in college, that was like a, a very popular way to buy, uh, you know, intimates and, and swimwear. So I completely understand. And I think that's super cool introduction into consumer products, especially when it's it's consumer products that people are so picky about, right? Which yeah. Amazon sellers are really picky and you yes. kind of launches you into understanding the mindset of a consumer. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And having had um, physical stores as well, it gives you that sort of background as to, you know, what, what are people looking for? What makes them buy things? Um, what drives the buying decisions? how how to close the sale um really what what you need to do to make people buy from you and then how did you start selling on amazon was it still in the swimsuit intimate category no that's not a category <laughs> I wanted, <but> clothing <laughs> i wanted nothing to do with it <laughs> <laughs> it's such a it's such a difficult industry um you know there there are so many components it's very complicated to manufacture i wanted nothing to do with something that people could wear um and i've always loved home decor you know things for the home beautiful things for the home and um it was actually you know, as COVID was happening and the world was turning upside down and I thought, okay, this is an opportunity to look for something completely different and to diversify. Um, and that was when I started the whole Amazon journey. Um, and I thought, you know, what do I love? I love beautiful things for the house. So that's what I'm going to do. Nothing to do with swimsuits because, you know, people will order 10 bikinis, try them all on and return nine, maybe 10 of them. So I just, I just thought I don't want any more of that. Yeah. I don't blame you. And anybody who's starting out selling, 
I always say clothing is really difficult unless you're already a brand that knows how to sell and you have sizing down because exactly what you just said and Amazon's return policy is so generous. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I would never start. I would never, ever start with it, really. Um, I would just advise anyone who's starting out to stay away. <laughs> yeah. So you took the leap and you moved you went into the home goods category and yes. tell me about your selling journey. So, um, I started the first product I started with was, um, not the most successful. Um, it, it was, you know, um, I went with this whole thing of, you have to be really different. You have to be unique. It's got to be really different. I think it was just too different. But I think it was, you know, you always learn. So it was good to learn with that product. There wasn't a, there wasn't a huge financial investment in it. Um, so we, I started with that and then, you know, kind of transitioned into other products. But I've been very focused on building a brand that's got a very clear identity um, rather than a jumble of sort of random unrelated products. So... Um, you know, all, all of my products are things that the same person could potentially have in their home. Um, so, so yeah, so we got, got started like with one, then it became two and then it just kind of grew and grew from there. And, you know, you, you learn as you go along and then you start adding variations and doing, doing all those things that we do to try and build a profitable brand. Do you still have that brand? Yes. The same one? Yes. Yeah. How long have you been running it? Uh, two years, two and a half years. That's great. No, coming up to three. Yeah. Just over two and a half years. Yeah. Yeah. So it's still going. Um, not really, not really thinking about sort of exiting anytime soon. I think, I think I'd like to kind of just keep growing it for now um, and see where it can go. Yeah, I think that's an interesting topic, right? We all start yeah. our Amazon businesses. We Most people are thinking, okay, I can make five, 10, 20,000, $30,000 extra on the side of my regular job and then transition, build the company. And some people like me, when I started, thought, okay, I want to sell this in a year or two. Like I knew that mm -hmm. I was going to sell in a year or two, but I also love selling. And yeah. I'm at a place with my new brand, my healthcare products, where I really do want to grow this business to keep running it. Like I am not mm -hmm. in a hurry either to flip this business. I think because I mm -hmm. learned so much with my previous mm -hmm. business. Yeah. So I do admire that you're fully open to admitting like, Hey, I enjoy running my Amazon brand right now. And I don't want to sell it because you're pouring so much of your love into it. Yeah. Yeah, you do. You do. And I, and I do enjoy it. I think it's still got a long way to go. Um, like I feel like I still, I still have a lot to do with it. Um, and then we'll see, you know, I'm, I'm open-minded. I think you always have to be open. You, you, it's hard to have very sort of rigid boundaries of what you think you want to do. Um, you know, never say never, but who knows? We'll see. True, true. So what are some of the challenges you're facing with your personal brand? Um, challenges. Um, all, you know, we all have those sort of back end things that happen with Amazon that go wrong for no reason um those 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 are just frustrations i think day to day sometimes you know when you look at your listing and suddenly all your bullet points have disappeared you know for no reason whatsoever um or you know your rankings suddenly have dropped and and there's no clear reason why that happens um i i think um generally sort of building building the brand driving traffic I, I think we're getting to a place where the ppc is now kind of running quite well um that was that was a challenge but i feel like 
I, I feel like we're doing, we're doing okay with that at the moment. And I, and I outsourced that some time ago. <laughs> um, so that, that would be probably the main challenge. Um, you know, the, the other challenges lead times, you know, product manufacturing times, because the products all come from India hmm. and, um, you know, they promise you delivery dates and, you know, they tell you it's going to be six weeks and it's eight weeks, 10 weeks, and then you got the shipping time. Um, so definitely keeping the right level of inventory in stock. That is, that is a challenge. That's always been my challenge. Yeah. Everybody who knows my story, I am my first year I ran out of stock, like, I don't know, four or five times. So yes, yeah. inventory is very important and very challenging and you learn so much about it. Let's touch on outsourcing. You just said you outsource your PPC, which is your Amazon advertising. Was that yeah. the first thing you outsourced for your Amazon business? Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Because I think it is so technical and it's becoming more technical and more complicated. Um, when you're trying to build a business, when it's a young business, you're juggling so many different things. And I think um, it's definitely, I think for me, it was the right thing to do to outsource that. You know, I did my own PPC and you learn a lot and, and you, you think, oh, I'm, I'm getting quite good at this. And then, <laughs> and then it just becomes more complicated. Something else comes along and, and um, yeah. I think it's definitely a job for the experts. You're listening to the Fearless Sellers, the Women of Amazon podcast. If you like what you're hearing, click the subscribe button. We have new content coming out all the time and you don't want to miss out. Yeah, I think that's a good tip for what it takes to be a successful Amazon seller. Let's continue on this topic. So I'm a huge fan of product research, right? So before you launch your store, yeah. I believe in finding the right product to sell through proven methods. And that's one of the reasons I love teaching and being an Amazon yeah. coach is teaching people how to do their product research. And then there's so much focus on, well, what should I sell? But often mm -hmm. what you're talking about is how do I sell? That kind of gets left behind. Yeah. So let's talk about that. So more of like you have your product and it's up. Like, like, let me ask you that. Like, like if I'm new, like, how do I sell? Like, what does it take to be successful? Um, I think for me, uh, with, with a background in bricks and mortar retail, I think I always, and I, and I'm always saying this, it's kind of repeating myself, but you have to think about your, you know, you have to see your Amazon listing the same as a, being the same thing as a physical store. And you have to go through the same process. Um, you know, if, if you're opening a physical store, what do you, what do you think about? You think, okay, I've got to have, have it in the right location so that I'm kind of capturing the traffic that's going to be interested in my store. Um, so, and then, you know, how do you get people to come into your store? You make it look beautiful. You know, you have beautiful windows. You make it look really inviting so that people come in. And then once they're in your store, how do you get them to buy? You know, you have beautiful displays showcasing the product and, you know, making it look beautiful. And then you have sales associates who come up to clients and inform them, tell them about the product, tell them how wonderful it is and um, how they can help them, etc. So, so you might think, what's that got to do with an Amazon listing? Well, it's got everything to do with it. Um, so if you go back to location, what's, you know, how does that tie in with an Amazon listing? Well, how, how do people find you on Amazon? It's your keywords. You know, do your keyword research, make sure that your title's got all the keywords that are really important. Um, that's how people are going to find you. And then when they find you, what's going to make them come into your shop? Where's your shop window? Um, it's your hero image. So clicking on your hero image is what they're doing to come into your shop. Um, so your hero image look, needs to look 
fantastic. It needs to look really attractive. Um, and if you need to do something to be different, to attract people's attention as well, do that. You know, we talk about these sorts of things all the time. You know, look, look at the page. If everyone's product is facing left, maybe yours can be facing right. Or, you know, how, how else can you be different to stand out on the page? So, so that's, that's, the pro, that's, the, that's the part where you get them to come into your shop. And then when you're in your shop, what do you do? <laughs> you know, you have beautiful lifestyle images. You know, lifestyle images are so important because it's all about relatability. People like to see things in use and to see how, how that particular product is going to make their lives better. Um, and where you don't have a sales associate, a person there to talk to you, to tell you about the product, your images need to do all that heavy lifting and an even better, a video. So that's why it's so important to have a video. Um, so this is all the content on your listing. And then of course your bullet points. Um, you, you know, there are schools of thought that say that the bullets are not so important because we're all very visual. We've all got very short attention spans. It's all about the images. You know, the images are really, really important and they have to be very eye catching. But the bullet points are also really important because that's how you speak to your customer. Um, and, you know, I so often see bullet points that are just so short. There's there's no conversation. They just have a few facts, you know, say 100 percent organic, um, you know, fair trade or, you know, best quality vitamin C serum or whatever it is and they're not actually they're not actually talking to you you know it's so important to do that to have the word you coming up in your bullet points um so yeah that is basically your listing which is your the equivalent of your physical store yeah, so and that's I love... how I approach it. <laughs> really yeah, no and it seems so simple the way you're saying it, yeah. but there's so much that goes into it. And I saw the cocktail table image that you created and yeah. the black and gold one. And the table itself yeah. is just beautiful. And your photography was beautiful. Yeah. Then going through the photos, it was much more than a cocktail or an end table. And I was yeah. just watching the story and the uses of this table. And I mean, yeah. I was ready to order it right there while you were presenting. Yeah. I was like, Hey, just, you know, send me the link. Yeah. So that is exactly it to tell a story. Um, that's, that's what we do, um, with videos, with images, with a plus content. It is about telling a story. Um, and that's how you, you kind of engage with the customer. And for A plus content, for those listening who may not have launched yet, can you explain the benefit that and what A plus content is? And I like how you always say, take advantage of A plus content because it's basically yeah. a gift from Amazon to sellers, right? It's free to us. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So anyone who's brand registered, has a plus content and so there's there's one module which is your brand story where you can where you if you've got multiple products um you can showcase all of those so regardless of which listing it is people will still get to see more of your products whilst they're learning about your story about your brand and your company and then um there's there's the basic um a plus content which everyone has access to and it's very it's sort of very um it's rich content it's got you know space for lots of images and there's space for text to talk about your products and your company so it's it sits at the bottom of the listing um but if you're scrolling on mobile as you scroll it it comes up and it is and it is very very um eye-catching it's eye-catching that's that's the big thing about it and it's a space to showcase your product and to talk about features benefits maybe additional information that you weren't able to fit into the main part of your listing but generally it's sort of a continuation of 
of what you have above. Um, but it's a space that Amazon doesn't doesn't charge you for. So it's free. So you should use it, even if it's just repeating the images you have further up. If you don't have anything else, just just do it. Just use it. Don't leave it blank. Definitely. That's great advice, because as new Amazon sellers or even like a new product launch, yeah. Sometimes you don't want to spend extra money to have those yeah. modules built out yet until you're making money, but it's good advice. You can just repeat the images that you already need to fill up yeah. at the top and put your lifestyle ones down there as well. Or if you have any extras from the photo shoot, just put some yeah. of those down there. Exactly. Something is better than nothing. Definitely. And as you were touching on, it does show your customer you care a little bit more when you're building out your product detail page, like your your full product page and giving the customer more and more reasons to connect with your brand and buy. I'm telling you, that cocktail table was gorgeous. This is on record and it will be on YouTube. I'm tempted to figure out a way to even like showcase that cocktail table because I'm sure everybody listening is like, hey, I want to see it because it was just so beautifully displayed. Oh. <laughs> and now um, tell me I, with that cocktail table yeah how you took the photos it was the basic end table and then you moved it through to show different uses right like it could come off as a tray exactly so it, it's it's folding it, the the legs will fold so it can go flat um and the top is a, is a standalone tray so you can use it as a tray but also, you know, what the one of the advantages of that is that, say, um, you've got some drinks or something that you want to bring in, you can take the tray into your kitchen, put on the tray all the things you want to bring through, and then you bring them in and you just sit them on the legs. So you don't need an extra surface to put the tray on. So it goes straight on top. And, um, you know, you can use it you know, as a plant stand, you could use it for flowers, you could use it as an end table and bedroom. And the, the thing about it is it's very compact. So if you have a, a small space, it, it fits. Um, and also because it folds, you know, you can put it away if you're not using it. Um, yeah, that was, and so we were, we were telling that story. I can, do you want me to, I can WhatsApp you. Yeah, so send me that because we can include it somehow maybe on the YouTube so people can see. To me, that's a that's a winning Amazon product. It's versatile. It's lightweight yeah. to ship. It's beautiful. It looks good yeah. in photos. So that's why it was so striking to me. And yes. the home decor is always a good category, especially for new sellers yeah. to start in. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm just going to. Send you this yeah, send that to me and we'll share that with everybody listening. If you want to see this cocktail table that, um, yeah, you know, there's no commission to buy it. I just want to give you a, a solid <laughs> example of yeah. using A plus content and telling the brand story in the home decor category. Okay. So that's like aspirational to get the premium A plus. Yeah. And how do you achieve that? How do you achieve that? So, um, you have to be brand registered. Um, you have to have your brand story on, on all of your listings, which is fine. That's easy. The main thing is um, you need to have a fair number of products. Now, the number 15 doesn't mean you have to have 15 different ASINs. Amazon's requirement is that you have 15 sets of A plus content that have been approved. So it, it's not it's not as black and white as it doesn't mean you have to have 15 separate products. You know, people do have kind of tricks and things that they, they can do, like if you've got lots of variations, etc. Um, so, yeah, it's not as hard to get it as it sounds. And well, it definitely sounds really like it useful and is that that's something you do right like you help amazon sellers through maximize you help them with that we help create content and optimize listings so we don't get involved in the back end or 
uploading images for clients, but we do um, listing optimization. So we'll we'll do listing audits and, you know, if they want to go ahead, we will create the content for them. Um, and that can be anything, you know, it can be building an entire listing or an Amazon storefront, or it can just be part of it. You know, it could just be a video or sales copy, um, any any of those. So, and now you're in the UK and yeah. you have studios definitely in the US, right? You said you had one in um, Utah? Utah, yeah. So that's our main um, kind of our photographer, videographer that we work with. Um, they're, they're a couple and they're amazing. They, they're, just, they're just so great to work with. So we do a lot of work with them. We also do some work in the UK as well. We've got videographers, photographers here too. Um, a lot of our clients are either based in the US or selling in the US, but we have European clients as well. And we can we can work with listings pretty much anywhere. Um, if anything needs translating, then we, we use the professionals for that. I don't attempt to translate anything myself. Especially not into Italian. Especially not into Italian. I, I, I definitely don't speak Amazon in French or in Turkish or any other language. So, yeah, the, the pros need to do that. I bet you could do it. I feel like you could nail a Turkish listing. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about what you said you do audits, right? So, uh, yes. For listings, meaning you'll look at people's Amazon products. Yeah. detail pages and you'll you'll give them feedback or how does that work yeah so anybody who um who thinks you know i'd like to get somebody to to just cast their eye over my listing and tell me what they think you know what am i doing right where could i maybe improve then then we do that and that's a completely free sort of no obligation service that we provide so anybody can can book a call and do that. Um, and then, you know, if they if they think, hmm, actually, I'd quite I'd quite like you to to change my images, get some, you know, upgraded content or or whatever, then then we can go ahead and do that. But anybody's anybody's free to to get us to to do an audit and and tell them what we think about the listing. So, yeah. Oh, great. We'll put a link to that in in the notes. So if anybody wants to have a second set of eyes, an expert eye of yours, look at their listing. That's awesome. That's a really generous offer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we've been talking for quite some time. I love everything you have shared with us. And I want to ask you, is there anything that we haven't touched on yet that you'd like to share? Oh, um. We have been chatting for a long time. Um, I think I think we've covered quite a lot of ground. It's just I, I think it's just I love being within the Amazon community. Um, I think it's it's a very inclusive and very friendly community. Generally, everybody's kind of trying to help everybody else. Um, and I love that it's so global because on on any given day, I'll be, you know, speaking with people from all corners of the earth, from India to the west coast of the US and sometimes Australia. So I love I love that it's so global. Um, yeah, it's it's great. And it's just a world of such opportunities and it's exciting. I mean, it of course, it has its challenges like everything, but um, I think it's it's a great opportunity. I couldn't imagine not doing it. <laughs> This is the only industry I've worked in where everybody is so excited and happy yeah. and we all want to help each other. And yeah. I can't imagine now going anywhere else because we're all obsessed with Amazon and it's so fun. It doesn't even feel like work. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, you know, we didn't know each other, um, but um, we met in Las Vegas and got talking and you know, here we are. So I know we become fast friends because we have so much that we <laughs> excitement around selling on Amazon that it's like we've known each other forever. 
I know, I know. And it is amazing. It does feel like that because you meet so many people and you're just constantly in contact and it does, it does feel like you've known them forever. So I it, love it. I think it's great. I do too. And there's room for more people to sell. So anybody interested in selling, reach out to me or Fatosh, and we would love to help you and get you going. Well, thank you so much for spending this time with us and sharing your insight and your journey. And we will check back in with you, hopefully in a few months, see how the end of the year is wrapping up. And until then, stay fearless. Thank you. If you're looking to get started selling on Amazon or maybe need some help with your current sales on Amazon, go to fearlesssellers.com. That's a lot of S's in there. <laughs> fearlesssellers.com. Use coupon code FEARLESS for 50% off our next event. Thank you for listening to the Fearless Sellers, the Women of Amazon podcast. Until next time, stay fearless. Fearless.